Hey guys, Anthony here from Signal by Sony, a show about everything Sony makes. And you know, every now and again, we like to find out what makes a Sony gadget work. And the best way to do that is to take it apart and get a closer look at the inner guts. And we're about to do that with Sony's latest internet player with Google TV. Joining me now in the studio is someone who knows a thing or two about tearing down consumer electronic devices, <laughs> Patrick Norton from Techzilla. Pat is here to do the teardown and walk us through the internals. Because if I touch a tool, I will cut myself. Stay away from the toolbox. I man. will, absolutely. I will no keep blood. my hands off. No blood on the signal set. So um, this is cool. We're going to tear this down entirely. This is a new generation set-top box, and mm -hmm. it functions a lot like Sony's other Google TV products. It allows you to watch cable TV, you can search the internet, you can stream media, you can download all kinds of Android apps. You can see here, this sleek little guy. It's pretty nice, actually. Clean, smooth design. You know, nothing really distracting on the front. On the back, though, we have all the good stuff. We've got the uh, HDMI input from your satellite, your cable TV box, your DVR. Then we follow up with the HDMI that goes out to your TV. A, uh, if you want to get geeky, a toss link or SPDIF connector. That's the optical output that goes to your AV receiver. The IR blaster, uh, the plug for the IR blaster, I should say, uh, 100 base T Ethernet, a pair of USB ports, and just to get really fancy, a classic shaver cable power cord. Is that what those are called? That's shaver called. cables. But originally, they yeah, wondered. Back in the day, I guess electric shavers <laughs> used to have those. So in the box is pretty simple. You've got the actual uh, uh, the Sony the, the Sony box itself, mm -hmm. batteries for the remote control. Power core. This is your IR blaster that allows it to repeat instructions to your other uh, AV devices. Mm -hmm. Instructions, which are always a good thing. It's actually a really nice, uh, clean, simple setup for this one. And check out the remote on this one. So there's a touchpad on here. It's clickable. I don't know if you can pick up the clicks like on that. your mic. And then on the other side, ta-da, your keyboard. So it's a nice, compact, easy to use remote control. The batteries should last a while, because if I click here and pull off, we've got space for the AA batteries on either side. It's Bluetooth remote control so you don't actually have to point it at the TV. Should we tear it open? Let's tear it open. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, there's two screws. A Phillips head screw here, a Phillips head screw here, and we're going to pull out our trusty Phillips head screwdriver. Okay, so we've just popped that loose and okay. we're going to slide the cover forward for the dramatic reveal. <gasps> and look inside. There are two kind of big blocks that dominate this. So you can kind of see mm -hmm. the motherboard or the main board under here. That's the green stuff. Um, this is the heat sink. It's just a big, massive block of aluminum. Yeah, there's no there's no fan under this at right. all. Right. This is good. That means it's going to be silent. And so we're going to pop this off and see if we can find the CPU underneath. This is always a scary moment for me when I'm taking something apart, because this is the moment where you find out whether they use like a normal thermal compound or if they actually wanted this to never come off and they glued it. Oh, cool. So you can see the actual big giant holes in there to let the air come through. It's actually a pretty big chunk of aluminum. Yeah, so what's that junk? This basically makes sure that the heat, basically this this makes sure the heat sink is totally touching the top of the main processor inside okay. of this. Let me wipe that off and see if we can see more shiny inside of there. So what's cool about using this chip in a product like a Google TV? I'm a big company like Sony. Mm -hmm. I want a product that does everything my users want it to do. I want it to do it in a way that's incredibly inexpensive. I don't want to do it in a way that simplifies the amount of construction. Like, the more chips you integrate and the less power the main processor uses, the quieter, the easier to cool, and the less expensive it is going to build this device. Gotcha. It's is. like the digital equivalent of having fewer moving parts in a machine. Bingo. And gotcha. generally speaking, the fewer parts that move, the happier everything runs. So that's, again, that's your CPU. It handles the QDO graphics inside of there. It's pretty cool, right? Because this will actually render HD video. It does the on-screen display. There's a processing engine inside of it to kill jazz per pixel compression for artifact reduction. It's pretty slick. And then over here, whoops, over here actually, that's your Wi-Fi adapter. Okay. And let's see if we can pop this off. Once you get the first tab, everything else kind of comes apart. So there's actually the power supply unit inside of there. And right here is the connector. So we're going to detach that so we can get the Wi-Fi board out. Okay. Right before we do that, we're going to need to take one more board out. And I think this is going to be, it looks like IR receivers on here. This is the IR transceiver board. If memory serves, this is actually the receiver for IR signals. Like if you want to use a, a if you didn't want to use the Bluetooth remote with the keyboard and the mm -hmm. really nice scroll, you know, touchpad. Yeah. And you want to use this to regular, like, oh, this is my VCR remote and I love it. <laughs> um, in theory, right. you, could, you could use those together with this. So that's the receiver and there's like, you know, these send the IR signal out, and then I think the IR blaster. Okay. Let's Look here. 
Don't they look similar? <laughs> <laughs> and that actually exposes the Wi-Fi board. So it's the 802.11a, let's say A, B, N, and G. Okay, everybody listen for the popping noise. <gasps> They basically have that cover to keep okay. the signal from blanking out the rest of the system. And then there's three antennas that are buried in this. There's one, two, three. So you have a just a ton of Wi-Fi coverage across this. So I think that's about as far down as we can go, unless you want to see the bottom of the case. Let's just pull it all out. <laughs> Why not? You just want to see if I can completely break this, don't you? Yeah, kind of. And there's our complete motherboard. Is this, for, uh, is this for grounding or something? Uh, well, actually, I think it's working as a heat sink. That's the underside of where the main chip was and a gotcha. couple of the other major processors on the board. So that's basically making sure that every, they, as much heat as they can pull out from the bottom is going to this big piece of metal. And then you can actually see now that the case is all the way open. Ta-da! More air vents. They really crunch a whole lot of stuff into a very tiny box, don't yes. they? Well, when you think of this as like basically, you know, this would have been a desktop PC five years ago. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, and wow. the motherboard would have been, you know, this big. And the power supply would have been, you know, this, you know what I mean? This would have been a box this high and this big and this wide. That's awesome. I think it's exciting. Pat, thanks so much for tearing this down for us. If you want to find out more about Sony's internet player with Google TV, be sure to check out Sony's website. And if you want to stay on top of everything Sony makes, be sure to subscribe to our videos at youtube.com signal. This is Anthony for Signal by Sony, and we'll see you next time.